All right, here's another uh, hypothesis or another defense by a Muslim, Muhammad ibn Daud, who, not the traditional writer, this is a modern uh, a viewer who is writing in our comments there at the bottom of one of my videos. And he's talking about the fact that the reason why we can't find any Quran from the 7th century is because, really, that the, the Muslims are just too busy fighting and killing, and therefore it stands to reason that they didn't have time to write it down. And secondly, that they were nomadic. They were moving all the time, so they didn't have time to write it down, uh, and that the language is just too primitive at that time. Let, let me just read what he says, and then, let's, and then I want to respond to it. Muhammad ibn Dawud says this, Jay, I understand your hypothesis. Christians in their early centuries were persecuted and poor, that means financially, so they could only afford papyrus. And they had to write in secret because they were being persecuted. Yet, Muslims were wealthy and had access and money for par parchments that came from power. Therefore, they had all kinds of access to parchment, and they also had the control of the area. Our, this does not answer Dr. David Wood's response, his too busy hypothesis that the early Muslims were conquering so fast and violently, so they did not have time for writing the Quran. I would add to Wood's too busy hypothesis that, as the narrative states, the early Muslims were from the Hajjaz, which, as we know, was a community that were nomadic. The language was primitive. Um, look at the fact that they didn't have any dots and vowels. They only had the rasm. And the culture was vocal rather than textual. They were oral. They felt that they didn't write anything down. Therefore, we will not expect to find the earliest manuscript in the 7th century. He goes on and says, this point is reinforced with the Muslim apologist's argument of recitation. Here comes orality again. You know, every Muslim, whenever they run out of excuses for their documents, they always go back to orality or recitation. We can depend on the recitation, which could or could not have some truth to it. We don't know either way because there is no tangible evidence. Exactly. So therefore, it's nothing more than an excuse. You can't tell me that there was orality. You can't tell me that anything was recited because you have nothing to prove for it. You don't even have a reference to it. Could it be, he says, that David Wood is right with his too busy hypothesis, and you, Dr. Smith, are also right with the Uthmanic Quran being a fabrication, uh, retro, re retrospective or uh, a, a leaded to, uh, it's attributed to. You seem to be concluding that if the Uthman Qurans are, fa are false, then the seventh century narrative was false. Is that correction? Uh, that a correct assumption. Let me, there's three things he's brought up here. I want to start with the third one and then go backwards. Because this last sentence, uh, it, you seem to be concluding, therefore, uh, that the Uthmanic Qurans are false. Not that they're false, they just don't exist. The narrative about the Uthmanic Quran is false. The narrative that comes from the 9th and 10th century is false because there's just nothing there. And I've been asking for this for 25 years, and I still cannot find evidence for an Uthmanic recension and stop wasting my time with archetypes or Q documents. Ur Quran, they always talk about. I'm not going to listen to that anymore. So, yes, it is a false narrative. That is false. The narrative is false. What about this idea that they were just too busy to write a Quran? Folks, listen. That's not what the traditions say. Listen, all you Muslims, if you're going to be depending on the tradition, then will you please quote the traditions? Because the traditions are very clear that there was that there was a Quran there. I mean, just look at what Al-Buhari says. Al-Buhari says very clear that there was a Quran. It was first written down at the time of Abu Bakr in 632. It was then rewritten a second time in 652 by Uthman. That's not me saying it. That is Al-Buhari, volume 6, book number 61, hadith number 510. Read it. It's there. And I don't know of any Muslim that disagrees with that. So, obviously, you cannot say that it was not written down. Your own traditions tell me it was written down. Every Muslim I meet tells me it was written down. So, forget about this too busy. The fact that they were warring, yes, is what's causing the problem. Because that's why the first Quran had to be written down. Because so many of those who had recited it, who had memorized it from hearing it from uh, 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 Muhammad, died in the Battle of Yamama. About 70 died, and they, they'd realized that if all of them died, there would be no Quran left. So that's why it had to be written down. And then the reason it had to be written down a second time is because there was many different dialectical, there's so many differences that they had to create just one Quran. And that's why it was then rewritten in 652. Not me, that's what your traditions are saying. I disbelieve them. I agree with you, uh, Muhammad Ibn Daud. I would agree with you on your third point. This is all nothing more than attribution. This is nothing more than fabrication from the ninth century, redaction back to the seventh. These are redacted, nothing more than that. But then you go on and say that because of the fact that they were nomadic and that they had a primitive text, 
uh, and, and that they were vocal. Therefore, we wouldn't expect to have a crown. Well, again, that's just that just uh, contradicts everything you your traditions tell you. So be careful. Are you going to go with the traditions or not? If you're going to throw away the traditions, then we have we can talk on even uh, on on even space because we're talking from the same premise. Then what do you have? Then where does this book come from? Where does it exist? This book here. This is your Quran. Where does it come from? If it's just if if you uh, if you are nomadic and you're moving all over the place, therefore you can't write it down, and you are. Uh, primitive as far as the Arabic is concerned, and I agree with it. The Arabic there was Nabataean Aramaic and it only had 16 consonantal te- uh, consonants, so therefore it was very archaic. And I don't understand why God in His wisdom would ever choose Arabic if it couldn't even accommodate His revelation. Nonetheless, if you disagree that therefore, because of the fact it was primitive, because of the fact that they were nomadic, because of the fact that they were warring all the time, and, and also, as you were saying, because of the fact that they were oral, therefore it could not be used. Can you see those four things? You're trying to make excuses for. Well, be, if you're going to make those kind of excuses, then I would say we can debunk every one of them because they were not nomadic. They had cities. Now, what do you think Medina was? What do you think Mecca was? I don't believe it was there. What do you think that Basra, Baghdad, Damascus, Jerusalem, Cairo, all these cities, these were large cities. And by the time of Mu'awiyah, they, they had all the way uh, from Tripoli, all the way to Afghanistan, there were hundreds of cities in there. So they were not nomadic at that time, not at the time of the, uh, certainly during the time of, even at the time of Muhammad or even immediately afterwards. And of course, if you want to say that the Arabic was primitive, nonetheless, it was written down. It had 16 consonants. Yeah, that, so therefore you can't dispute that. And then if you say they were all oral, well, folks, getting back to again, that's not what your traditions say. They did not memorize it. They wrote it down immediately so because of the problem of memorization. And that's why I would suggest uh, that uh, that it, it was written down. Uh, the difficulty is, where is it? Where is it? And I keep coming back to the same point. It looks like everything you believe in is nothing more than a fraud. This is nothing more than an attribution, a redaction. And for you Muslims, I hope that there is a Quran from that time period. There was no Quran from that time period. Looks like the Quran only begins to get to come together during this period, during the 8th and 9th and 10th century. God bless you. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your comments. Keep them coming, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. All right, here in my office, here... Uh, on the East Coast United States. This is Jay, over and out.